Welcome back to What RT Nibs with General Disturbance. Now this is a Type 61, that's a Tier 9 Japanese medium tank. And we're located on the south spawn of Tundra. And the name of the player is Oddity Hayes, and he's a member from Havoc 4. And battle has started. Well, what can I tell you about Type 61? Well, it was the first tank that was actually designed in Japan after the Second World War. It was developed during the middle 50s till the early 60s and on the uh, chassis of a pattern tank, the M47. It's got paper fin armor, so it's not a brawler, but it does have two different guns, a 90mm and a 105mm top gun, which is a rifled gun, so it's a very good sniper. He's looking for targets. You can see here, he's carrying up the typical actions of a Type 61, sniping from a distance, and then uh, pulling away. But in this particular instance, the problem is he was spotted, so he's going to have to pull away and find another firing position. Otherwise, he would be the one receiving shells, not the enemy. And I think that Primo is just coming down from the hill, or is he on the hill? No, he's on the hill. Okay, Oddity Hayes is relocating. Oh, was there a target of opportunity there? Well, it appears to be a Type T55A. No. There's a big force going through the Western Channel at the moment. But I don't think that Oddity Hayes wants to get mixed up with them. And he's back at the very back of the map with these TDs who are watching the hill. Oh, he was seen. So somebody's up on the hill looking down. And that may have been the Primo. And somebody's in their cap already. Now he'll probably get spotted when he goes across this gap here. But I think he's going to have to go across the gap. Oh, there's the Primo. And yes, there was somebody up there, Strib. And he did take a hit from the Strib 361. He can get spot on the cap here. Oh, there's the enemy. And it's an it's a ripper pattern. And there's also an M45, a VK45 over there as well. Spit side scraping. See if he can get a shot in. Go for the ripper pattern. Easy hit. 419. Can he get another one in? It's loaded. Go for the rip pattern again. Yep, takes him out of the game. First kill. Now, 45.02. He's pulling back. Get the side of him. No, he didn't get through. The 45.02 has been hit by enemy, uh, by our RT rather. And he's now out of the game. He was taken out by the Red Larisse. Or as Jingles likes to call him, the Ravioli. But if he goes around this corner, He's going to get hit by that SDRV-1, SDRV-S1, and he gets a shot right there into the top of the uh, Primo. It's difficult because he's coming over a, a, a hill at every time, which is causing his gun to uh, pull up as he pulls back and pop down as he goes over. Okay, can he get that uh, Primo again? No, he can get the C-54 though, C-55A, sorry. Nope, doesn't get a shot in there. And C55 is now capping. Can he get around it? Yes, he does. 424, even at an acute angle as well. And he, oh, he's trying to do the ring of death around that T95, and he's paid for it because he got taken out. It's actually a T28, T not a T95. But there's somebody still capping. It is the Primo. He fires in 405. Good hit. And he's now one shot that Primo. Can he get a shot into him to finish him off? The Revelry says up there. The SDRV I think is busy. There's a IS-6 and he's got side to him. Side on and the IS-6 gone down. Now there's a batch at 12 ton up there. There's the Primo. Oh, out the game. 227. Lovely. And he's been joined by an SDRV 103 up there. And he's in siege mode. 
it's going to be difficult to hit. But if he pokes his nose out... Oh, no, the RT got him. 1,200 hit points. Good strike right onto the top of him. It's the one thing those uh, those Swedish flat packs don't like is uh, if you hit them with a uh, an HE round, it just goes straight through because it's very thin armor and the shell's coming in virtually from above. And so it just literally punches straight through the 30 millimeter thick armor sloped. That strip's still up there. I mean, some people call them the IKEA tank because they're flat packs. Others call them the flat pack tanks. <laughs> and that Stritzvan S1 is still up there. Uh, but he's near the edge now and it's being pushed back. And the object 704 is coming up. Oh, wow, right into the rear of him. He backed up a little and you saw his rear and he's gone. I think they've got there. No, they've got control of the hill now. In fact, there's only two enemy left. One of those is the RT. The other is the Batchat 12 ton. The RT is a, a Lorraine 155-51. And he's been spotted. He's over in the corner. Going to go for the Batchat. Oh, lovely leading shot there. 331. 336, rather. And get the second shot in. That will finish him off. Oh, he stopped for a second. Oh, missed the opportunity. Oh, that was, that was such a pity, but he can get the uh, RT. Or is he going to go for... No, he's going to try and shoot him across the... Wait, no, he's lost sight of him. Oh, oh my God, he, he got him! Blind hill! He estimated where he would be and took him out with a blind shot. Now, where's that Lorraine? He must be in the frame at the moment. There he is. Dial in and, yep, kill shot. Five kills and that wins the battle. And I'm pretty sure he's got the high caliber too. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats and see how well he did. Oh, very nicely indeed. He got a first class tanker in the Type 61. Uh, he also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. And that's exactly what he got. He got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got five. He got a five for effect for doing more hit points, uh, more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. But best of all, he picked up the high caliber. He dealt the most damage in the battle, at least 20% of the enemy hit points. So he came top on damage, 4,634 hit points of damage. Uh, he came top on kills with five. And he got top on base XP of 1,103. He fired 17 rounds, got 16 direct hits, very good accuracy, 13 penetrations. So the problem is that sometimes those hits were hitting the target, but I just couldn't get through the armor. Um, he did damage of 4,634 hit points, of which 1,072 were at more than 300 meters. Uh, that beautiful kill on the Batchat must have been more than 300 meters. Um, he received two hits and both were penetrations. Not surprising that one of them was from the Striv. Uh, in fact, both of them were the Striv, I, I seem to recall. Uh, but uh, perfectly understandable. He spotted one enemy vehicle. Uh, I think that was the Lorraine because uh, he was up on top of the hill when the Lorraine was spotted. Um, but it may have been one of the other vehicles. Uh, he damaged seven of the enemy, killed five of them, and did damage assistance of 510 hit points. He managed to get 28 defense points while he was shooting at those uh, tanks as they were capping. Uh, on a premium count, he earned 65,144 credits. He got a personal reserves bonus of 532,571, and the personal missions payout of 10,000, bringing his grand total to 107,716 credits. And after repair and ammunition reload, and remember, he did use mostly AP, standard rounds, no premium rounds needed at all in this battle. Just shows how good that uh, rifled gun is. It is phenomenally good as a sniper. Um, and he got 80,884 credits to take away. Wow, that's pretty good off one battle. Uh, and remember, this is a tier 9 medium with virtually no armor. So, you know, that is a great total to take away. So he received 1,655 XP, he got times two for the first victory, he got a personal missions payout of 828, and he got an additional 248 uh, XP because he was playing in the platoon at the start of the battle. So his total came to 4,386 XP altogether. So 
Very nicely played there, Ozzy Hayes. Uh, five kills, high caliber. Yep, I think you can't fault that one at all. You're certainly developing with the Type 61. And uh, good luck with uh, the STB one when you get it. So, uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in our next video.